The history of the land of Israel has impacted virtually every aspect of modern life. Yet many today have no idea just how much this ancient land has shaped our world and our values. Among the many legendary figures from Israel's past is one who would change time itself. His birth, life, and death are still felt 2,000 years later and is the very foundation of our modern calendar. He is Jesus, the Jew who divided history. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. With this prophetic declaration recorded toward the end of the 8th century BC, the prophet Micah pinpoints the birthplace of the promised Messiah. Ironically, if not providentially, this new warrior king would be born in Bethlehem of Judea as King David before him. Not only that, but just as David had united Israel and defended her against all oppressors, so too would the Messiah, or the Anointed One. At least that was what the people of Israel expected him to do. Now, and because of Micah's prophetic declaration, the people of Israel knew where the Messiah would be born, but the question was when? O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. We thrill to sing the songs of Christmas every year in the distance Bethlehem and be low Bethlehem, the shepherd's fields. We're just south of the holy city of Jerusalem. In these fields, the shepherds kept watch over their flocks by night. Here, the sheep were raised that would be sacrificed in the temple. Hundreds of thousands of sheep raised in the fields of Bethlehem. We think of the shepherds as simple men uh, depicted in the Christmas story, but perhaps they were not as simple as we think. These were sheep to be sacrificed, lambs to be sacrificed for the sins of Israel. And it's very likely that those who watched over them were not so much simple shepherds, but rather priests who were shepherds, watching over these sheep, protecting them from predators, for they would become the sacrificial lambs for the sins of the people of Israel. Imagine the scene nearly 2,000 years ago when one angel appeared to these shepherds. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel the multitude of the heavenly host praising God and singing, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Bethlehem is no longer little, and not as still as she once was. And so Israel waited and wondered, but as one century gave way to another, there was still no sign of the promised deliverer. Instead, Israel was forced to live in subjection to many overlords, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans. Each empire in turn left its footprints on the landscape and culture of the Jews. And in that long and painful process, dashed the hopes and dreams of succeeding generations. With each year passing, Israel's unrelenting suffering made the words of the prophets seem like cruel and empty promises. That is, until a new night and day dawned over Israel, and against the blackness of the night, an unusually bright star. Many who saw the star must have wondered about its sudden appearance, but only the wisest of men knew it was the long-awaited sign from heaven. The Messiah's birth was imminent. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, 
During the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler, who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. That Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of bread, suggests the village was named for the rich, wheat-producing fields which surrounded it. Bible references place Bethlehem in the hill country of Judea, just beyond the southern boundaries of Jerusalem. It was the setting for many Bible events, including the poignant story of Naomi and Ruth, two women whose lives were intertwined both by love and sorrow. Their story began when a famine ravaged Israel. Her husband Elimelech and their two sons were forced to leave Bethlehem for the land of Moab in search of refuge and food. Naomi was subsequently widowed. In time, Naomi's sons took Moabite wives. Tragedy came calling again, however, some 10 years later, when both sons died prematurely. This meant that Naomi and her daughters-in-law had to survive in what was virtually a man's world one with little compassion or understanding for women on their own. Fortunately, by this time, the prolonged famine in Israel had ended, and the fields were once again ripe with golden grain. It is then that Naomi felt the unmistakable summons calling her back to her roots in Bethlehem. In the drama that unfolded, Ruth also made a fateful decision that would eventually change the course of human history. She chose to accompany her aging, grieving mother-in-law home to Bethlehem, but little did she realize that in time, her act of mercy and kindness would bring its own blessing and reward. Before long, Ruth was remarried to a wealthy landowner from Bethlehem named Boaz, a near kinsman of Naomi. Their Jewish Gentile union produced a great grandson named David, and although he was the youngest of seven sons and seemingly least favored by his father, God saw in David the bearing of a king. In selecting David from among Jesse's seven sons and anointing him as king, the prophet Samuel declared that God chose men not by their outward appearance, but by the conditions of their heart. David's heart was right before God, and so he would wear Israel's crown, but not before he learned the humble ways of a shepherd in the fields around Bethlehem. When viewed from the perspective of biblical history, however, there is much more to these individual stories of rejection, sorrow, and redemption than meets the eye. Clearly, in all of this intertwining of lives and circumstances, God was at work, as if to weave together the threads of some grand divine tapestry. Many centuries later, another child was born of Ruth's family tree. He too would be born in Bethlehem, but his birth, unlike any other, would be seen eventually as the pivotal moment of human history. From that moment on, history would be his story. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Who was Jesus of Nazareth? Whatever men may say or think about him, no one can ignore him. He was born in Bethlehem, close to here, just beyond the shepherd's fields below these high hills of Jerusalem. Wise men from the east came in search of him. They had followed a star that brought them here. They were asking in Jerusalem, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Their curiosity aroused the anger of Herod the Great, who was then 
the king of the Jews. In the distance, I see Herodium, one of several fortresses that King Herod built for himself. Tradition says he's buried somewhere on that mountain. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, but he lived only some 33 years. But look at his impact on human history. Even the very calendars that we follow mark the date of his birth. We speak of B.C. before Christ and A.D. Anno Domini in the Latin in the year of our Lord. This one Jew divided human history and he, div he continues to divide nations, families. Well, he said he would do that. He said, I will divide families. There will be those who will believe in me and others who will not. A husband perhaps will believe a wife may not, and the reverse of that is possible. Jesus Christ goes on dividing people, nations. Wars have been fought in his name. But who is Jesus to you? Simply a Jew who lived in the distant past, born in Bethlehem, or the one about whom we sing in the Christmas season, or is he more than that? Is he Savior, Christ the Lord? Each man and woman must answer the question for themselves. Who is Jesus? How could the life and untimely death of this one man a man who was born in Bethlehem yet raised in an obscure village in Galilee have so impacted and influenced human events that today we speak of history in two parts, both before and after his birth. Jesus' impact on his own times can be understood in terms of his recorded words and actions. But how do we explain his influence on ours? How can it be that the religion he established, Christianity, has survived and flourished across cultures and national boundaries for more than 20 centuries. And this in spite of skepticism of its claims and the widespread persecution of its followers. Of Jesus' short life, it has been said, 20 centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race. All the armies that ever marched, and all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that have ever reigned have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as that one solitary life. The fast flowing waters of the River Jordan. Jesus came to the River Jordan before he began his formal ministry in the Galilee for that's where John the baptizer preached. John, seeing Jesus approach that day, said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And he baptized Jesus, and Jesus, as he came up out of the waters, the heavens opened, and the voice of his Father spoke and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This, as the Spirit, in the form of a dove, rested upon him, the fullness of God's Spirit. Jesus said after that, do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I've come bearing a sword, but it was a sword that divided households, for not everyone responded to him, believed in him. In fact, the Jewish nation as a whole rejected him. He understood that. He knew what his mission was. He knew he'd come from the Father as the Lamb of God, but he also knew that it would be a matter of personal faith and not all, not all would believe in him. And he would then divide families because of belief and because of unbelief. It is the Gospel writer Luke who, in his account of the life and times of Jesus, tells us that Jesus was about the age of 30 when he was baptized by John the Baptist, a moment which marked the commencement of his formal ministry. Over the first 30 years of his life, the Bible is strangely silent. We do know that at the age of 12, his ability to discuss and debate the deep matters of God caused astonishment and wonder among the religious elite of Jerusalem. 
Other than this fleeting reference, however, there is no hint of the miraculous history-shaping ministry to come. As far as the Bible's silent years are concerned, it is assumed that Jesus lived the modest life of a carpenter's son in the village of Nazareth, in the hill country of Galilee far from the religious sophistication of Jerusalem. His recorded miracle of turning water into wine occurred at a wedding feast in Cana, a neighboring community to Nazareth, the first hint of world-changing events to come. It's an amazing thing to realize that Jesus spent the first 30 years of his life here in Nazareth in the hills of Galilee. Simple upbringing, carpenter for a father, a young girl that was chosen of God, ordinary parents, for an extraordinary man who would change the world. Born in Bethlehem, but raised in a seemingly insignificant place, Nazareth in the hill country of Galilee, most of the people in the Jerusalem area of that day would not even know where Nazareth was on the map. God does things differently. He certainly did it differently here. He began by sending an angel to speak to a young girl to tell her that she was special in his eyes. She was favored, chosen of God. God delights in doing things like that, showing up in the unexpected places, using insignificant places and people to perform His will and transform the world. He's done it throughout history. He did it here in a place called Nazareth. The landscape of the Sea of Galilee has changed little since Jesus walked along its shores. Through history, fishermen have cast their nets and caught fish in the sea, and weary travelers have found refreshment in its cool waters. The dividing of history began here along the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Over my shoulder, Mount Arbel, and just below it, Magdala, the place where Mary Magdalena came from, a woman whose life Jesus wonderfully transformed. It was as Jesus walked along these shores, he came across fishermen mending their nets. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. He said to them, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. All they knew was how to fish, and even then they weren't great fishermen, but thus began an adventure for them that changed them and changed the world. And Jesus walked a little farther along the beach, and there he saw James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and they too followed him. And these, this small band of 12, gave birth to a movement that has changed the world. It all began here by the shores of the Sea of Galilee in northern Israel. Perhaps on a day very much like this one, fishermen by the seashore, and this carpenter from Nazareth from the hills above. The history is his story, the story of Jesus, the Jew. Today, as in biblical times, the city of Tiberias is a thriving community of Galilee's western shore. But its prosperity continues in sharp contrast to other villages and towns, which, although they